Hello, uh, Fixed Income and Financial Risk Management guys. In this video, what I'm going to do, I'm going to talk, I'm, I will start talking about Nakamoto conferences. I'm not going to finish because I'm going to continue talking about this in the next video, but what I want to do here, I want to explain what was the main breakthrough that I, as I see it, of Satoshi Nakamoto in when he invented Bitcoin, okay? So, first we want to understand from the, from the perspective of computer science, why do we need banks? Okay? So think about what does it mean to have financial transactions, okay? So you have basically your own bank account here and here you basically have two types of operation. You have basically credit, debits, and you have credits. Okay? Now, who is responsible for seeing, you know, the order of transactions? Okay? The bank is responsible for it. Okay, so it means that when I am your employer, I'm depositing the money into your account, the, bank's record, the bank records the transaction. Okay, so the bank records, the bank looks uh, when the transaction was done, and it basically what you have in your bank account is basically a record of transactions. Now, one thing, and you know, and this is basically plus or minus, and we do not care what was this transaction for, okay? We just say that it's plus or minus, and basically those transactions went to somebody else. They went to a third party. And who is responsible to check whether you have money in your account or not? It's the bank. Now, let's assume that you do not have a bank. Then what is the problem? What is the big problem of not having a bank? Then you have something called double spending attack. And what does it mean to have a double spending attack? Okay, this is Alice. Okay, and she buys a product from Bob. Okay, and she buys a product from Kai. Okay, she buys two products. Now, she has, the, the products are cost $50. Okay? Both products are cost $50. She has only $50 in the account. There is no bank. And then what she's going to do, she's going to send $50 check to Bob and $50 check to Kai. Okay? Now, let's say that, the Bob, that Bob's product went in and Kai's product went in. And now they want to collect the money, but they cannot collect the money. Because it's $50 here. Okay? You don't know whom, who, who does it belong to. Does it belong to Bob or to Kai? Now, for a bank, there is no problem. Because a bank will see that this, let's say that the $50 came first from Bob, okay? Bob comes, uh, Bob, you know, the check arrived to Bob first. So he will come and collect the money, okay? The bank will record from plus $50 here. It will say that $50 went to Bob and then zero. When Kai will come to collect the money, it will be zero, okay? So the bank as a central authority has only one role and one role only. The role of a bank, okay, is to order transactions. Basically, keep a ledger book. Of course, the banks have other functions that they fulfill in the society, like issuing credit, okay, giving you mortgages. But in the initial role of a bank, the initial role of a bank, okay, when people deposit money into the bank, they count on the bank to basically keep a ledger, keep a ledger book, okay? That's the main role of the bank. Now, Satoshi came after 08, and he decided that he doesn't trust the banks because the banks, in his opinion, created the, the crisis. And because, in his opinion, okay, the frictions 
when you have uh, basically uh, a payment system through the bank, it's too, it's too basically, it's, it's too complicated or it's too long. For example, if you want to order an oil, uh, an oil uh, uh, tanker from the from Saudi Arabia, okay, you have to go through a lot of hoops. You have to issue letters of credit. It's a very complicated process, okay. And it's a very complicated process because the banks have a monopoly. And the government, according to Satoshi, not according to me, it's according to basically the philosophy, the underlying philosophy as I see it, okay? Basically, you know, banks have monopoly on this, okay? And he didn't like it. So what do you do in order to circumvent this, to circumvent this, okay? I'm not going to go now into the, into, into the nitty-gritty stuff how we did it. We are going to talk about this in the next videos. But the, major, but the major observation of Satoshi was that if you declare transactions publicly, the problem goes away. So in other words, if everybody know your ledger, if everybody are aware of your ledger, if everybody know that you have $50 in your ledger, okay, then those kind of attacks are gone. Because everybody are watching you. They, can, they see all the transactions and they know all, not only a bank, but all people know, okay, that Bob got your check before. The key observation of Satoshi was that if you have something like this, if you make all transactions public, okay, you don't need a bank. You don't need a centralized authority okay, that orders transactions because uh, transactions will be automatically ordered because everybody sees them. Okay, and then if there is an argument, the majority will decide. Okay, let's say that I, excuse me, went to, to facilities and I didn't see Bob Ellis sending the check to Bob. I just see that Ellis sent the check to Kai. And Bob, I didn't see the transaction, okay? But when I come back and I say, and I see that, you know, that actually a Bob tries to collect the money, I said, no, 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 no. I didn't see the transaction. I just saw this transaction, but then, most of the people that didn't use the facilities, okay, which observe all the transactions, said, no, Yaakov, you're wrong, okay? We will decide because we are the majority. So as long as the majority is not bribed, okay, that Ellis didn't bribe all of them, okay, against, against this, against Bob or Kai, you will know, okay, the majority will decide. It's a democracy. The majority decides that this is basically the correct transaction. Okay? So that's the idea behind what we call the Nakamoto consensus. Now, we are going to talk in the next videos, which I'm going to record a little later, okay, about the underlying pinnings of how do you do that, because it's not an easy thing to do. And even, you know, and even many people that know math and computers inside out, always, you know, they're kind of, it's, 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 it's a very clever trick. And I actually re recommend you guys to, to, to read the Bitcoin paper and see how Satoshi himself is talking about it. Now, his vision is, okay, that Bitcoin should be a payment system, okay? He created this to circumvent the banks or to circumvent the current money, you know, the current payment system, which actually in involves, in his opinion, a lot of frictions, okay? He created this, 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 this system, and he actually clearly states, it's in the paper, which basically says that Bitcoin is a peer-to-peer -peer payment system, okay? Just like you share files between each other, his idea is that we can actually share money between each other, okay? So this is actually the, the, the main observation that I see that underlies Bitcoin's, you know, Bitcoin's uh, function and Bitcoin, you know, and how Bitcoin works, okay? So how it is implemented, okay?
okay? All this blockchain stuff and all that, we will talk about this a little bit later. But uh, the main philosophy of Nakamoto consensus is to make transactions public. Everybody sees transactions, so you don't need to trust anybody. You just need to trust that most people are honest, okay? That they will not cheat here, okay? And we will talk about how Satoshi thinks his vision of how we, you know, of how you cannot bribe the entire public and how you make sure, okay, that most of the time all public is honest and all the people that are watching these transactions are honest, right? So we will talk about this next time. Until then, have a great holiday and just uh, observe uh, Bitcoin, you know. It's fun to watch. Thank you and have a great day.